Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be reviewing this new study from SEMrush about Google's ranking factors for 2024. So they just conducted a relatively big study and basically they've outlined what they believe are the most important ranking factors in Google. And some of them are pretty shocking. A lot of them I agree with. And so we're gonna go through the ones that I think need the most attention here. And so you can go ahead and review the report and just, you know, you can search SEMrush on Google and find this report. So I'm probably not going to link to it because it will destroy my visibility on YouTube, as you know. So I will not do that. But what we do, what we are going to do is we're actually going to dig into some of these ranking factors and I'll show you some anecdotal evidence that a lot of these are true and some of them are just kind of ridiculous. Okay. All right, so let's dive into it. So we're just gonna be looking at the top 20 Google ranking factors, all right? Let's dive in. So one of the first ones that they say is a Google ranking factor is text relevance, okay? So we'll take a look at this one first. So text relevance really just means how relevant is the page to the keyword that you're going after, all right? So there are a few ways you can measure this. Obviously, you can go and look at this with your own subjective opinion, right? You can go and look in the Google search results and see like, okay, this is highly relevant to the keyword that I'm going after. If it's how to start an SEO business, let's say that's our keyword and all the results are how to start an SEO business. We'll take a look, how to start an SEO business. And we can see here, and if you just search, like we'll just search like start SEO business, okay? So then we'll just look here and you can see, like if we look at the results, we can see that the top 10 is all about starting an SEO business. So it's very clear that this is definitely a ranking factor. <laughs> Being Having a relevant page is definitely a ranking factor in Google. So that's like out of all the things that we can get right, this is the one thing that we definitely need to get right is having a page that perfectly matches the keyword and the intent of that keyword. So you really want it to be an apples to apples comparison and don't try to get fancy. If the keyword, like, Follow exactly what the keyword is. If it's how to start an SEO business, then create a page about how to start an SEO business, okay? So, and this is just across the board, right? This is just general SEO 101. Create the most relevant page possible that matches the intent, all right? So I agree with that one. And one thing you can do too is you can actually go into Surfer or any on-page SEO tool, it doesn't really make a difference. And you can see, I, I've actually sorted this so you can see the content score. So this is Surfer's score to determine how well a page is optimized for NLP, which is natural language processing. It's a, a fancy phrase for keyword relevance, okay? And you can actually go and see on average, if you look across most keywords, and of course there's some outliers, but for the most part, and I've done probably thousands of these SERP analyzers at this point, and I can tell you that most pages that rank well are typically optimize very well for NLP, okay? Which means they're the most relevant result for that keyword phrase, okay? So you can go and see on average, we can look across multiple keywords. It's pretty clear, right? And there's, of course, there's some outliers here of certain things, but it's also important to remember that this isn't the only ranking factor. This is just one ranking factor, which is that text relevance or keyword relevance. And you can go in here and look, you can go to the audit section and you can see, as this loads here, you can scroll down and you can see true density. Really what this is telling us is how relevant is this page to some of these other related keywords that we can go after, okay? So the more relevant our page is, the more likely that Google's gonna actually serve it up to the, to the searcher, right? Because Google's entire business model, search model, is based on serving up the most relevant result to the searcher. Because if they can't do that well, then at the end of the day, it's a useless search engine. So it's literally their number one priority. Now, do they do it well all the time? Definitely not. But that is definitely what their objective is. All right, so keep going here. So text relevance, I agree. So this little, my little, uh, you know, emoji here is this is gonna be whether I agree with it or I don't agree with it, okay? So on this one, 100%, I agree. Definitely a ranking factor, all right? So next one. So we'll go down here. Now we're looking at content elements. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. So if we look over here, you can see what they define as a content element. And they say that it's an image, list, table, schema. Uh, I think they also put, yeah. So basically any other element outside of just the copy. And this one's tricky because I, do, I don't know if it's a direct ranking factor, but I do believe that it influences 
user signals in your content. Okay, so if we go to my site, Gotcha SEO, and I'm pretty crazy about stuff like this, but you'll see even in this blog post, okay, you'll see that if this was just one big block of text and I didn't interrupt with any patterns uh, or I didn't break any patterns with images, then this may not perform as well because what I'm doing here is I'm breaking that pattern. I'm interrupting uh, intentionally because it increases engagement. And when you increase engagement on your page, those signals, it's hard to quantify, but there's a good probability that those signals are being used in the algorithm, right? And we know that Google is tracking everything we're doing on Google Chrome. Like all this data is being used. And in fact, in the recent legal case with Google, and they're kind of revealing some of their algorithmic factors, one of them is user signals, all right? Like the amount of people that scroll, the amount of people that engage in this versus the amount of people that just click off or bounce, right? They're measuring those things when someone lands on a page. So the way to keep someone on a page is first of all, you have to write interesting copy, right? So yeah, ChatGPT ain't gonna do it for you. You need to actually write good copy. That's the number one thing. Then after that, you need to add these elements in here that actually make your content interesting. So that's gonna be unique images. That's gonna be uh, you know, interrupting patterns with other various things, using bullet points, using headings. Uh, all of these things, it help it make the content more interesting. And then also using videos, okay? Videos are a good way to increase the level of engagement on your actual page here. So I agree that these definitely influence the rankings, okay? And once again, you can go into Surfer and you go over here and you actually go and look at elements or even just images and you can look at the quantity of images. And so in this case, it looks like the image count actually, it's funny enough, the image count on this one is actually not that big, okay? But if we go and look here, we'll see if there's any correlation here, elements, and we'll actually get rid of the content score. And so this is a good example because there isn't really any correlation between just having images and rankings, right? We can just quickly see that there's, doesn't seem to be really any correlation because there's sites that are ranking poorly that have a lot of images. Uh, but it's also one thing to consider is, we're gonna be talking about here in a second, it, these things are, really micro type of elements that influence users and users dictate algorithms. So, you know, it's hard to say whether it's a direct ranking factor. I'd say more of it's like a secondary or indirect factor uh, that may influence user engagement, which is a ranking factor. And that's how a lot of these are as well. Uh, another one is word count, okay? Black box means that like, I don't think that it's not important uh, but I also don't believe that it's a direct ranking factor. So just having a lot of words does not mean you're going to rank, okay? Just plain and simple. However, having a lot of words allows you to optimize your page to have maximum relevance, okay? And so like, if you look, we can actually you know get rid of a lot of these and we'll find out that you'll see there is not a correlation between just pure word count and, and ranking performance, okay? And we'll look across the board. This is just gonna be, you're gonna see there's not typically a correlation between just quantity of words and ranking well, okay? Look, I mean, there's clearly no benefit purely just if we're just looking at word count that will increase your rankings, okay? So, but the benefit of having a decent word count is that you can actually make the best page possible. Like if you just wrote five words on your page, there's basically 0% chance you're gonna rank at all, all right? And we look at this, yes, in the top 10, the average is only about, you know, it's still a lot, 3,200. But if you look across the board, this is in the top, you know, we're looking at the top 48, all right? You wouldn't even show up in the top 50 here if you didn't have a page that at least had some content on it. So we're looking like on average, if we look across the top 50 results for this one keyword, we're looking at it's probably at least 3,000 words for just to even get into like the possibility of ranking, okay? So, and this is gonna be consistent across any keyword that you look at. Uh, very rarely you're gonna find, you know, and this one's actually even higher correlation here, uh, but this is why it's, you know, it's very dependent on the keyword, but you're just not gonna really find a lot of keywords where like, no one has any content, right? And that's why it's also not, you can't say it's a ranking factor because everyone writes that is ranking writes long content. <laughs> so that's just kind of the standard best practice. 
Uh, so it's difficult to say whether that's what influences the performance. And I think there are other things that influence performance way more than just pure words. Don't focus on just word count. Focus on creating the most relevant page and the highest quality page, right? So you go into Surfer, you look at these NLP keywords, and you can build out an outline that is going to ultimately help you build the most relevant page, okay? That's the purpose of these tools. The purpose of these tools is that we can take these ideas and we can build a really relevant outline, a really re relevant content brief, and we can build that content from these seeds, okay? This is what we know is most relevant to that main keyword that we're going after. So you build that most relevant page and you make it as high quality as possible. And when I say high quality, I mean it should be different and better than what's currently ranking in Google, okay? So once again, just pure word count isn't gonna do anything for you. If you have a website that has no authority and you write a 5,000 word article on some keyword, you're probably still not gonna rank. Okay, because there's other variables that are way more important. So let's keep going here. All right, word count, in my opinion, is just kind of a neutral thing. It's definitely not a direct ranking factor. All right, so this is the most insane part of this study, and I've seen a few people on Twitter talk about this as well, and I agree with them. Uh, so URL and domain traffic and just general ranking positions. So according to SEMrush, um, and I don't know, I have, maybe I'm just misinterpreting this, and I don't want to like, make any judgments on this. Uh, this is just my personal opinion, but I just don't understand how URL organic traffic would even be on here because it doesn't even make sense. Like pages that are ranking well are gonna have more traffic. <laughs> like that's not a ranking factor. Like if they're ranking well, they're gonna have more traffic. So that's not a ranking factor. That's just an outcome of them ranking well. And same with domains, organic traffic. Like Websites that are doing well from an organic traffic perspective or an SEO perspective are going to have a lot of traffic. So it, just because they're ranking well and they have a lot of traffic doesn't mean that that's why they're ranking. So it's just kind of an absurd thing. And in fact, they put it, it's not only just once, it's one, two, three, like, and actually right here as well, four. So they have four of the same variables here about the fact that like the top results have good SEO metrics and good performance, which to me is literally ludicrous. It doesn't make any sense at all. I feel bad saying that because I know they put a lot of work into this, but these are just like, I've never seen anything like this. I don't know if it was just like they're trying to generate some sort of tension or whatever it may be. Maybe this is part of their uh, chess level marketing strategy to get people like me to talk about this. Um, but I think it just kind of hurts the credibility of this ranking factor study. So those can be completely ignored and you shouldn't even be thinking about that because it's literally, it has no influence. Like you, they're just have good metrics because they're ranking well. It's that simple. Okay, so we're just gonna skip past that one. All right, content age. Once again, this is not a direct ranking factor. Like the only variable that matters here as far as the age of your content like you can have a really old piece of content that has no traffic. It, just the general like amount of years that it's been around is not going to correlate to better rankings. Nor on the opposite side of the spectrum, like how new it is, is not going to correlate with rankings either. Right now, I do believe there is a little bit of a freshness benefit. I've really experimented with that. I've tested that a lot. Um, like for example, I have a, a keyword that ranks uh, best CMS for SEO, and this one here. I am ranking, let's say number two, I did go through and actually update this data. So this was an old post. I think I first published this case study in like 2018 or so, and it just got really stale and outdated and it started to fall onto the second page. So I actually went through, did another study, uh, basically to just prove my same result. Well, actually I did in 2016, so it was really old. Um, and then I republished it with this new information, new data, um, and then I changed the publish date because I did actually update it. Um, and so you could argue that freshness played a role here, but it's probably a minor role. Probably the role that is really the most interesting here is that Google saw that there's a lot of new content here. There's a lot of more, uh, it's become more relevant to the query, right? And so I think that probably influences more. And this page has a good backlinks as well, okay, which we'll be talking about here in a second. But it's just hard to say whether the freshness is the direct thing that influenced. I think it does. I think it's very minor, but I do think it has an influence as far as freshness. But as far as like having old content, like that doesn't matter. What matters is that the page has good backlinks. Um, and really, I think that the clock for a page really begins once it gets backlinks. 
Like it just publishing it doesn't start any type of equation into what we're doing. Um, I think once it gets indexed, that's good. Like it's indexed. Okay. You're at least in the ballpark. Okay. But you're not even close to the ranking game. Uh, that's just like bare minimum. You've done the bare minimum of getting into the game. Uh, but once you get your first backlink, now you're really starting to get in the game because you want those backlinks to start to age over time. And as far as content age, like just the how old your content is, I don't think that's really much of an influence. Okay, star ratings and schema. Once again, this is not a direct ranking factor because anyone can do this. Anyone can put schema on their content. Okay, you go over here and I can put schema on here. Um, we can go to, I'll show you an example here. We'll go to like the detailed Chrome extension. Uh, review. We'll look at this and you'll see like I, I rank here for this and it's a, not a super competitive keyword, but just to show you an example, like here's my little star rating and I gave it five out of five because it's a great extension, but this is not going to be a direct ranking factor. Just because I put schema does not mean I'm going to rank well. Uh, but I do believe that it does, it is a secondary or indirect factor because once you are ranking, I do believe that if you're kind of on your own with the schema, like no one else has it, it can influence organic CTR. And we know that organic CTR is absolutely a ranking factor. So anything that can influence organic CTR is something that you should be interested in. So schema, uh, you can see these kind of like these site links that are ending up in here. So all of these things are going to influence CTR. All right. And also just the general brand, like when someone sees the brand, that also influences CTR. If it's a trusted brand in that particular niche or vertical, that will typically influence as well. So there's a lot of variables as far as CTR goes, but this is one that can influence. Now, keep in mind, if everyone in the top 10 has like review schema, it's not gonna really have much of an influence, right? Because if everyone has it, then it, it's not unique. It's not that purple cow situation. So that's why it's really, it's a variable type of situation, but it's better to have it than to not have it is what I would say. But as far as it, you know, you just adding schema to your page and thinking that's going to have a huge influence, that's just not going to happen. It's just not. Okay. Domain authority score. There's a lot of third-party metrics here. We could use Ahrefs. You can use SEMrush. You can use Moz. Okay. Uh, those are what we have to rely on in, the, in this day and age. Okay. Before we could rely on PageRank, Google would actually let us see the page rank, uh, but that doesn't exist anymore. So now we have to rely on third-party tools to tell us how strong a site is as a whole. Um, and out of all of these ranking factors, I believe this like overall domain strength um, that is caused by lots of high quality backlinks is the most important ranking factor in my opinion. And if you look across the SERPs, this is clearly what influences things the most, right? When we look like, um, this is it's a couple examples here, okay? Blackhead removal, all right? And I've just picked these randomly, by the way. Uh, look at the DR column and you can see this is what influence rank, influences rankings, okay? We're talking some really, really strong domains here that just dominate, okay? As we go down, we'll see like as the rankings go deeper, the authority will typically fall and you'll start to see, okay, here's a 21, right? We've got a little bit lower. Oh, we've got a 54 here. Uh, then we keep going. We'll find some others. We've got a 40 in here, Okay. Like these smaller guys here, they just don't have a chance. It doesn't matter if they have the best content on earth. Okay, these guys here too, 13. Like it doesn't matter. If they have the greatest page that's ever been invented for blackhead removal, they just will not win until they can narrow this gap in DR. Okay, it just won't make a difference. Like it is the most important factor, hands down in my opinion. Like it, it is huge influence. Okay. Another one here, we can just, you could pull just literally any example. You'll find this. And sometimes you will see some people who do pop in here. Like we have these guys here, but look at how relevant their domain is. So this is the acceptance of the rules. If you have a really, really highly relevant domain, you can definitely can, you can kind of, you know, break the matrix of this system, which is having the most relevant page that exists or the most relevant site as a whole. Okay, and this is literally just about tape measures, this whole entire site. So they actually, it's very, very relevant. So, um, but we look at that and then over here, we've got another one here that's kind of lower DR. But you look across the board on average, you're typically gonna see very strong websites uh, just from a DR perspective. Another one here, once again, we've got a couple here that popped in, um, but it just has a massive, massive influence. And in fact, when I see 
a lot of weakness in the SERP here, I see opportunity. Okay, so if I see a DR22, I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. So I can actually get in here, right? So I get, I actually get excited when I see that because this is such a powerful factor is just general site authority. And the thing that's kind of, I hate to use the word unfair, but it's just sites with a lot of authority. They can rank basically without trying, right? They can just throw up any page at DR91 and they'll probably rank well. Like if we look at Walmart's page, I mean... It's probably a fine page. Yeah, it satisfies the intent. It's got the creams. It's doing what it needs to do. But there's no like content on this page. It's just, this is the content. Like the products are the content. Uh, and it does satisfy the intent. So it is the appropriate way to do this. But they rank just because they're Walmart and they have so much authority. If you modeled this exactly the same way that Walmart is doing here, you would probably not rank. If you like had a DR0, and you did exactly what Walmart is doing here, you wouldn't rank. It's that literally that simple. Like you just wouldn't. Unless you had an exact match domain, you could potentially get some leverage and some traction. But if you just have a regular branded domain, you do this, you're not going to rank. And that's what will prove that just overall site authority has a huge influence. Okay. So we'll keep going. That one's massive. It's one of the most important. So you should always be trying to grow your site authority uh, to build the strongest website possible from a link building perspective. Now keep in mind when people say like, when people get concerned about their DA or their DR or these other third party metrics and like, oh, that those are not, like Google doesn't use those third party metrics as a ranking factor. However, those third party metrics infer other things that are ranking factors, which is the overall quantity and quality of backlinks that are hitting a site as a whole, which does influence rankings. We know that that is a fact. Okay, ranking in images, this is another weird one that I don't understand. I don't know why they would say this is a ranking factor. Like if you're ranking in images, why would that influence if you're ranking in the traditional organic results? It's just another strange, bizarre one. I don't know even why that's even on the list. The uh, page authority score, once again, this is looking at the quantity of links hitting the specific URL that is ranking. This is definitely a ranking factor as well. Um, I always start with DR or the overall domain strength just because that I believe has a bigger influence. But then after that, then I'm gonna start looking at the gap uh, between us and the competition on the page level, right? How many links do the competition as a whole have on the page level? And I'm gonna narrow that gap, okay? So definitely a huge ranking factor. Uh, once again, this is all about backlinks. So this is just like the quantity uh, and diversity of backlinks hitting your site. So you want to have as many unique referring IPs, as many unique referring domains hitting your website or your page that you're trying to rank, okay? Uh, content quality score, this is basically, you know, we can measure this with Surfer. Typically, you want to have a higher score because it typically will correlate that your page is more relevant, right? So the more relevant your page is, the better likelihood that you're going to rank. It's literally that simple. All right. Ranking and featured snippet. Once again, I don't, these are so weird. Some of these, like, I don't know why ranking in the featured snippet would be a ranking factor. You're just, it's not a ranking factor. You're just ranking in the featured snippet and the quantity of featured snippets that you're ranking in would not influence your rankings in a completely different keyword set. So I'm just going to skip past that one. It's just, it's weird. Okay. Uh, domain age. This is not a direct ranking factor either. There's plenty of old websites that don't rank at all because they just don't have a strong backlink profile. It's like I said before, the clock begins when you start to acquire links. So that's why it's so important that you are constantly acquiring new links because it takes time for those backlinks to age and be trusted. And that's what influences. Like you should be thinking more about not the domain age, what's the age of my backlinks? That's really what I would be thinking about because that's really what's gonna have a much bigger influence. Uh, and this is why people waste their time on other things that don't matter. Like you shouldn't be creating tons of content when you don't have a single backlink going to your site. Like the number one thing you need to focus on is getting high quality backlinks to your site. And that's why typically for me, what I'm thinking about is like, I would rather create one really good asset. So like this one, I actually went and I purchased 26 books on Amazon to find the best ones. Okay. And I actually read all of them and then I created a review. So that's a lot of effort, right? And if you look at Google's EEAT guidelines, which I have another blog post about, uh, you can actually go to my blog and read about this. It's very, very in depth. We'll go over here. So I go to actually like each part of this. 
But if you look at the Google's EEAT guidelines, like one of the things that they look at, once again, things in these guidelines are not necessarily a direct ranking factor, but they're what you should do to try to create the best page possible. And one of those things is effort, right? Like how much effort was put into this content? So if you just went into ChatGPT and you generate an article versus me, who I actually had to spend money, I actually had to get the books, I actually had to sit down, read the books, then I had to write this blog post, that's effort, right? I had to put a lot of effort into it. And it's clear when you start to look at the content that I did actually do that because there's certain nuance in this content that would prove that I actually did read these books and you couldn't replicate that uh, with AI. I won't tell you how you could do it, but for the most part, you couldn't do it, right? It's pretty difficult. So the point is that I would invest in building assets like this and then if my site was new and then I would just focus on driving links to a really high quality asset uh, as much as possible so I could grow my site authority and as my site authority grows, then I start to publish new content because now the site is gonna have the trust. And if the site has the trust, then you can rank a lot easier, right? And that's what we should be trying to do. But when people, I see people publishing like hundreds of articles on a brand new site that has no authority, you are just wasting your time. Your time would have been better spent going out and acquiring backlinks in your industry that are high quality and relevant. And you can only do that at scale, like the only scalable link building technique in the world. You can buy links all day, uh, but it's not scalable. The only way to scale link building is through content. You have to create things that people want to link to. It's that simple. Okay, direct traffic. I don't believe this is a ranking factor, but I do believe that Google likely tracks this, at least in Google Chrome. And if Google is tracking things in Google Chrome, and this is actually in the new in the uh, in the legal battle that Google's having, and I actually have a YouTube video about this that you can go and find on my channel. But it's Google says that Google Chrome, it was built to support Google search. And what that means is that they're using Chrome data, everything we're doing here right now, to determine the quality of pages uh, in their search results. So you could argue that if a page is getting a lot of direct traffic, like if someone went to my post here and they bookmarked it and they put it in their Google Chrome over here, or they, you know, they went and they, they shared it with one of their friends uh, in a chat and that drove direct traffic to my blog post. And if Google Chrome's tracking all of that, then maybe that could be some sort of trust factor. It's very hard to correlate. Uh, and that's why I don't give it a, a plus as a direct, but I think there is something to it. I think it's a trust signal. And more importantly, like it's just a sign that your content is good. Like you don't wanna just have organic traffic. That's not a good sign. Like if you just have organic traffic, then it means you probably don't have a brand and it means your content, your like the traffic that you've generated is likely just been directly influenced through pure uh, SEO variables, but it means you probably don't have much of a brand and it means your content probably isn't that good. If people aren't sharing it and uh, you know linking to it and doing all those other signals that actually prove that it's a good piece of content. So just you know think about that at a broader level. Loading speed, this is not like, this is not going to be, it's a type of situation where just having a fast loading page is just generally what you need to do. You can go into Surfer and you can look broadly at this and just go to page speed. You can do, uh, we'll just do, you know, load time here. Um, you'll see that there really isn't going to be much of a like variable here. I mean, there's pages ranking here that are, you know, loading basically faster than the first page. Okay. And you're going to see that across the board. However, just increasing your loading speed is not gonna probably increase your rankings, but it does influence user experience. So just generally, you wanna have fast loading sites, fast loading pages, because it's just annoying. Like no one wants to go on a site that's really slow, right? You don't wanna go on a site that's slow. So it definitely does influence user experience. And we could argue that user experience influences SEO in some ways. Uh, so just make your site as fast as possible. Right, It's not going to hurt you in any way. So you should invest in it, even if it's not a direct ranking factor. I think it's more of like a negative factor than anything. So like if your site, if it takes 20 seconds to load, I think that's going to hurt your rankings. But if you take it from 20 seconds to three seconds, I don't think that's going to make your rankings go up. I think it's more of a negative factor than anything. Okay, Just like if your site was hacked, like if your site's hacked, Google's probably going to pull it out of the search results. But if your site is not hacked, it doesn't mean you're going to rank better, right? It's just, I, it's that type of factor. It's same with an SSL certificate, same thing. All right, uh, dwell time. This one's highly controversial and I'm not gonna get into dwell time, but it's once again, a user signal, right? If people come to your site 
they go over here, they spend more time on it, they click through on things, they are actually spending time on it, they're trapped on it. I think it definitely could influence uh, SEO performance. And it's also looking back at like the motive behind like YouTube, for example. Like when you go to YouTube, YouTube's goal is to keep you trapped, right? This is why they have everything set up the way that they do. Okay, so I block my feed so I don't see. But this is the way that it's all set up. It's designed to keep you trapped on YouTube. They do not want you to leave YouTube, okay? That's the number one goal. So if you think about that, that's YouTube's motive and YouTube is Google. So, you know, there's must be something to this potentially, okay? I don't believe it's a huge factor because not every keyword requires high dwell time. Like for example, if you're going after what time is it in St. Louis and I give you the answer right away, then why would you need a long dwell time? That doesn't even make sense. I gave you the answer that you came for, you can leave, right? I've satisfied the intent. I've given you what you want. So that's why it's Google's probably really careful with this one. So I wouldn't say it's a direct ranking factor, but I do think it's something you should think about, something that you should try to do just because that's what every other very successful website focuses on. They all focus on trying to keep users trapped on the site. That's what they want, right? Okay, keyword coverage and keyword placement. Keyword coverage, once again, is just purely based on relevance. So I agree with that. Uh, keyword placement, actually placing the keyword in the most important spots, okay? This is just SEO 101, but we wanna have keyword in the URL, okay? So try to get the keyword in the URL. It doesn't need to be the exact keyword, but at least try to get some of the parts of that keyword in the URL. Uh, you wanna have it in the title, okay? We wanna have it in the meta description, and we wanna have it in the first H1, somewhere in the first, let's say 100 words, okay? So I usually try to, to put it in the first sentence, and then try to get it in the first H2 here, okay? That's what I try to do. That, that's just my standard, like, bare minimum type of optimization. And then once that's set, then I go into Surfer or any on-page SEO tool and start to optimize it for NLP, okay? So I agree with that. All right, now we're getting towards the end here. A couple things that were missing, okay? There's some things that are missing that I think are very important as far as how they influence rankings. Okay, I agree with a lot and I disagree with some, um, but overall, it's a good study. I do agree with some of it. Um, okay, couple here, search intent. I don't think intent was even mentioned. Uh, we can, let's see if intent was mentioned. Uh, okay, yeah, it does have user's intent. Uh, they do talk about it a little bit, but not as like a direct type of thing. Now, you could argue it's kind of embedded in some of these just like by relevance. Like if the content is very relevant to the keyword, it's likely is going to satisfy the intent of the keyword, okay? So I would understand why it wasn't mentioned, but I think it's also making sure like out of all the ranking variables, like you have to satisfy intent. That is the most important thing. It needs to make sure, like if it that's off, nothing else matters. Like it is that important. Like if it is off, like if someone searches, uh, you know, best SEO books and my blog post is about best health books, then the intent is off, the relevance is off, everything is off, right? And of course, Google's really good at this. Google's not gonna show anything that's off in that regard. But just keep in mind, this is really, really important. Um, and also the other thing too is, you know, making sure that you're serving up the right page based on the intent. Now this part gets a little tricky because informational content can be served on a commercial query, okay? So like if we look up numbing cream here, okay? So numb tattoo creams. Uh, I guess that's what it is. Best num, what is it called here? Let's see here. Okay, tattoo numbing cream. All right, so we'll look this up. We'll search this. All right, so at a high level, we're seeing some product pages, okay? But if we searched like this and we added a modifier, all right, this changes the intent of the keyword, right? So now we see here, we've actually got a informational asset that's ranking for this, okay? And this makes sense. Because someone searching just tattoo numbing cream, it's hard for Google to know, like, do they already have one in mind? Like, so they're just going to give it, you know, based on authority, they're going to give the most relevant results. But if you add best, now you've changed the intent of that keyword. And now they're looking for like, okay, they're likely looking for a list of tattoo numbing creams that are high quality, right? So now they're trying to figure out, you know, I want to try to do my investigative research on this and find the best ones. Um, and so that's why Google's going to serve up more informational content. So that's what I'm saying. You got to be, don't be afraid to use informational content 
with a somewhat commercial query. It does not, people get way too like black and white about this. Like they see a commercial query, so okay, it has to be a category page or it has to be a product page. That's just not true, right? It just, it literally isn't. Like if we look up, like the example I've been using SEO books, like I don't know how well I rank for this. Okay, yeah, I rank number two for this, right? You could argue that's a pure commercial query, like SEO books, commercial query, but the top two results are both informational assets, okay? so. This is where it gets tricky and you should always just do whatever makes the most sense in your unique situation. And for me, I could like create a page about my book, The SEO Entrepreneur, and just have like try to rank for SEO book. But realistically, I'd rather create a piece of content that has a higher probability of ranking than just creating some sort of product page. So that's just my personal opinion. All right. Going through here, topic authority was not mentioned. I use, I call it topic authority because that's what Google uh, uses in its guidelines, which just means how much relevance does a site have around a particular topic, right? How many assets have they created? I don't believe, I think link authority is way more important than topic authority. Um, I know there's uh, some other SEOs out there that say topical authority. Doesn't matter. That's just debating semantics. Doesn't, no pun intended, but that doesn't make a difference. What matters is like how much content relevance does a page have? or does a site as a whole have? If you're a website that's about SEO, how much do you write about SEO? It's that simple, right? If you're a site about, you know, how often do you talk about tattoo numbing cream and tattoos in general, right? That's what we're looking at. And that wasn't really a focus here, a whole lot in their ranking factor study, uh, not based on what I could see, okay? So, and I know they're kind of measuring it just on like a per page basis, but definitely an influence here, something that should be at least considered. Another thing here is link quality and relevance. We talk a lot about links here, quantity of links, uh, diversity of IPs and all that good stuff and referring domains. These are all ranking factors, absolutely, overall strength. But looking at the overall link quality and relevance is also something that needs to be discussed, right? That's very, very important. You could get all kinds of garbage links, but it's not gonna rank and it will likely penalize you. So this is huge. Like the fact that this isn't even considered in this is like insane. Cause this is like one of the most important things that needs to be done. Okay. It's so, so critical. You do not want to go out there and just acquire any link. It needs to first focus on relevance, then focus on the quality of that site. Right. And the quality of the site, like just a general rule of thumb, like a site is a good link opportunity. If number one, it's relevant to you. And number two, it has good links itself. Like if you look at the link profile, um, you know, any site that has a decent link profile, we'll go over here, we'll run like, you know, this page through here. We'll see what referring domains it has. We'll go to referring domains. And you can see like, I've got some strong domains that are linking to it, right? These domains are, you know, high DR, good traffic, uh, at least the top three here, right? And they're just good. And if we look at the site as a whole, we'll see generally most there's a lot of high quality sites linking to my domain as a whole okay this is all going to create a lot of trust uh for what we're doing here right and more importantly i'm getting links from sites that are highly relevant in the industry okay elegant themes is wordpress so directly related to seo hubspot you know huffington post which is not directly relevant to seo but it's really a high quality trusted entity moz you know all this stuff neil patel whatever these are all highly relevant, highly trusted domains. That matters a lot. So like a ton. So it needs to be considered. It's not mentioned here. And then finally, the last thing is about anchor text. So anchor text diversity is really, really important. And if you go super crazy with anchor text, you could definitely end up getting penalized. So I would be really careful, right? So we could look at the exact match here. So if you look at my anchor text optimization here, it's not super aggressive, right? I'm not being super aggressive. I'm not just like slamming SEO books or best SEO books a hundred times. Um, and there's some intentional elements of this and some of it is not just because this naturally occurs, but just be really careful. Don't use your exact match keyword a lot. It's really dangerous, uh, especially if you don't have a lot of site authority, like big authorities sites can get away with it. But if you're a brand new site and you're trying to do that, I would be very, very careful. Uh, and just try not to repeat the same anchor text. Just always diversify it as a general rule of thumb. And I have a whole anchor text guide on my blog. Uh, if you go to anchor text, gotch, you'll be able to see here. I've talked a lot about this. It's a really, really extensive guide. This is a guide I've used for many, many years. Got a million comments. But uh, but just follow something like this and be just be really careful. That's all. 
So that is all I have. Yeah, that was the ranking factor study from SEMrush. I agree with a lot of it, disagree with some of the weirder ones. Um, but overall, good study, agree with most of it, and uh, hope that was helpful. And let me know what you think about this study in the comments below. And of course, as always, like my video so uh, we could uh, you know, help manipulate YouTube's algorithm. All right, thank you so much. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.